Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at a quick review for the major personal tax changes for 2018. So bear in mind, this is not comprehensive, 100% comprehensive. I cannot go over every single rule. I'm going to I'm going to do my best and this is going to be a quick review and this is for educational purposes now any change you would like to learn more about you can go to my website and click on income tax course tax cuts and jobs of 2017 and i have 80 lectures plus covering those rules but this is just a quick review okay and i always remind my viewers that's you to connect with me on a professional as well as a personal level i really like to know my viewers uh, you can connect with me on linkedin if you have a linkedin account if you don't have a linkedin account please make sure you do, make sure you do have a linkedin account that's very important for your professional image as well as networking purposes if you have a facebook account you can like my facebook page and you can connect with me on my personal facebook if you if you chose to you want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube so you're always up to date about any additional lectures. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlists, email your friends, let your classmates know about them. This is my Twitter account and on my website, you can find my lectures. Now, if you are viewing this recording, there's a good chance you are either an accounting student or a CPA or a CPA candidate, or you could be just wanted to learn. Anyhow, I just want to let you know that this recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. If you like this recording, you can view hundreds of hours of video lectures about tax, auditing, accounting, thousands of multiple choice questions, including detailed solutions, especially if you are a CPA student or if you are just a student in college, you can su supplement your resources, dozens of simulations, textbook, audio lectures, electronic flashcards. Use promo code PMF, you'll get 10% off of the best valued CPA course. You will benefit yourself, benefit this channel, and you do have my support if need be if you're going for your CPA. Let's go ahead and start by comparing just for just for for the purpose of comparison I'm going to use the single uh, tax rate first. So this is your tax brackets for 2017 and this is for 2018. Let's just take a look at at uh, at the difference. Uh the 10% not much of a difference, but notice uh, the 15% now it started at 93, 9,326. Now you would, it's 12%. So notice there's a 3% difference. So now if you make between 90, if you're uh, taxable income between 9526 and 38,700, uh, you only pay seven, 15% on this, on this amount. Again, notice the, you, you, we go from 25 to 22 for the 2018. Again, there is a lower tax bracket, but notice it ends a little bit earlier. It used to end at 91. Nevertheless, it's lower tax bracket. Also, 28 is 24. So overall, it's a lower tax bracket, okay? Um, there's a shifting of income. That's basically what's going on here. There, there's a shifting of income. Your income is being taxed at a lower level, and which is good, which is good. Overall, it's good. Um, again, married filing, uh, married filing jointly, 15% down to 12 and notice here um up to 19,000 now notice up to 19,000 you'll get the 10 percent you used to be only up to 9,325 okay same thing for uh, uh for the 15 percent it went from 15 to 12 and they increased it to 77,000 used to be up 15 percent up to 37,000 again I would say this is this is good news, but again, you cannot make a comprehensive statement un until you look at the taxpayers overall overall return. But overall, the tax rate this is the major change. The tax rate and the tax bracket are big improvement compared to prior years. Okay, we're gonna look at the standard deduction. And the standard deduction, good news about the standard deduction, and this is the standard deduction. Basically, the standard deduction is an amount given to you by the government. It's a standard. Every Everyone gets it. So if you don't itemize, you could use the standard deduction. And for example, just to give you an illustration, if you are married filing jointly, the standard deduction of last year was 12,700. If you were single, it was 6,350. So here's the new standard deduction. They double, they almost double the, uh, the standard deduction. So there's a difference of 5,650 if you're single, and the difference for married filing only is 11,300. At the head of a household, they increase the standard deduction by 8,650. So this is definitely good news. Because why? Because they increase your standard deduction. 
which in turn reduces your taxable income. Now, you, we also used to have something called personal exemption. And basically, the personal exemption is taken away. How does the personal exemption work for each dependent, for yourself, as well as each dependent and your spouse that's claimed on the return? You will get a deduction of 4,050. What happened to this? It's gone. Basically, the personal exemption is gone. So what they did, they took the personal exemption and they increased your standard deduction. Okay. Again, you cannot make a definite statement if this is good or bad, but overall, if they took a deduction, I'm going to call it, you know, bad news. If they increase the deduction, it's good news. But how it works, all how it all fits all together, you don't know until you finish someone's return. And each individual is different. Okay, let's take a look at the child tax credit. And this is also designed to offset the uh, the takeaway of the personal exemption. The old rules, the credit was up to $1,000. Now the credit up to 2000 So they did double your child tax credit. Refundable credit was up to 1000 Now the refundable credit is up to 1400 And that's capped at 15% of earned income in excess of 4500 So if your income is greater than 13855 you are capped. Uh, how does it work? Basically, what, what that means is if you earn more than 4500 if you earn more than 4500 up to 13833 Let me just show you where these numbers are coming from minus 4,500. So this is the amount in excess. Let me just do this computation real quick. Minus 4,500. Let me see. 13,833 minus 4,500. That's 9,333. That's, that's the amount above 4,500 times 15%. If you multiply this, multiply this by 15%, it should give us approximately 1,400. Therefore, if you make more than 13,833, you're, you're basically, you are capped at, you are capped, the refundable credit is capped. Uh, more good news, they increase the phase out. So before at 200,000, you would, you would lose the uh, child tax credit. Now it's at 240. Married filing jointly went from 400 to 440. Head of a household 200 to 240. So this is this is definitely good news. Um, again, they increase the credit and they increase the phase out. So more people would qualify, and they would they will not be phased out. The next topic we're gonna look at is taxes you paid, and this is what we are talking here about: income taxes, general sales tax, real estate, personal property tax, and other taxes. The old rules is all these taxes were deduction. Uh, deductible on your schedule a if you if you itemize your deduction there were big deduction for some and they were all deductible okay um the new rules you are limited to ten thousand for married filing jointly and five thousand if you are if you are filing as a single okay um who's who, who who's going to affect the most it's going to affect new york california new jersey where the property taxes this number here property taxes here this is high in those states now, well, it's interesting, um, you know, if you know anything about those states, um, you know that they are Democrat. Is this to penalize them? I, I don't know. Who knows? Okay. Um, interest you paid. Interest you paid is what are the old rules? The old rules, home acquisition debt before 2018, interest on up to $1 million is deductible. So if you have, if you bought a home and your mortgage is up to $1 million, it's deductible. Now the home acquisition debt. If you have the debt before 2018, nothing have changed. You still have that interest deduction on your loan as long as your loan was up to a million dollar. Here we go. Home acquisition after 2018. Interest on only $750,000 of that is deductible. All what they did is they reduced the million down to 750. So if you're paying interest on this million, you were able to deduct the whole thing. Now, if you bought the home after 2018, you can only take the 750 times that percentage. Interest on home equity loan, line of credit up to 100,000 is of that is deductible. So if you have a home equity loan, like a second mortgage to take a vacation, buy a home, do remodel, remodel your home, um, home equity loan, 100,000 up to 100,000, it was deductible. That is gone, and I'm telling you a personal experience. I still have a, I used to have a home line of credit. I did pay it off because it's no longer deductible. Um, miscellaneous itemized deduction subject to two percent adjusted gross income. Assuming you itemize, my students would love this. All these deductions are no longer deductible from 2018 to 2025. So all these miscellaneous subject to two percent deduction, and there's a lot of them. 
okay now some of them for example all all section uh, 212 expenses expect except expenses for producing rental and property income they're gone now if you don't know what rental and property income is just go to my chapter six and my lectures and you can you know look at rental and royalty income um same thing if you don't know what hobby losses are uh, hobby expenses up to hobby income see chapter six home office deductions are gone all these topics one way or another they are covered in my course but no, no longer deductible from 2018 to 2025. There are other miscellaneous itemized deduction not subject to 2% adjusted gross income. Those remain deductible for AGI, impairment work-related expense of individual with, dis with disability, amortizable premium on taxable bond, losses from Ponzi-type investment scheme, gambling losses to the extent of winning, unrecovered investment in an annuity. Those are still deductible. Those are not subject to 2% limitation. 401k contribution, they did not change the rules. They increased the limit, I believe, by $1,000, so you can contribute $1,000. Personal casualty and theft losses, again, students like this, will like this, uh, because they are suspended from 2018 to 2025, although they are suspended. Um, in my class, I'm going to still teach personal casualty and theft losses, uh, because they are still they do still apply in federal disaster area, and they could be on your CPA exam, although they are suspended for pr practical purposes, but you could see them on the CPA exam. Charitable contribution. Uh, charitable contribution was part of itemized deduction. It's still part of itemized deduction. Um, for the cash contribution, you were limited to 50% of adjusted gross income. Now, what they did, they increased it because um, because they feared that less people will itemize, therefore less people will contribute money. So what they said, if you contribute cash, you can deduct up to 60% of your adjusted gross income. Moving expenses. Um, there were various rules: job change, mileage, time limit, so on and so forth. And it used to give a lot of headache to the students, what's deducted and what's not. Those rules are suspended unless you are part of the armed forces. Education credit, the American Opportunity Credit, um, 2,500 of which 1,000 is refundable. First year of college, that's still the same. Lifetime learning credit up to, to $2,000, no minimum number of credits, that's still the same. Non-taxable scholarship and grant, that's still the same. More about educational issues, tuition and fees deduction, $4,000, they, they increase the phase out, which is good. It means more people would qualify for this deduction for AGI. Student loan interest, $2,500, that's still the same. $529 plan amount that grow tax-free if used for education. They expanded this to include K-12 elementary and secondary school tuition for public, private, and religious schools. So they expanded this. You could use that money for more options. Alimony, there was a change in alimony. Now, now bear in mind, this alimony change only applies to alimony post, um, post I believe, 12, 15, 2017. So starting any alimony that, that took place after December 15, 2017. Simply put, when you start 2018, it applies to 2018. Alimony used to be deductible and taxable. Any alimony agreement entered into after this date it's no longer deductible, it's no longer taxable. It's no longer deductible, it's no longer taxable. Any alimony prior that was that was in effect, it does not change. Now, earned income credit, there's no change to earned income credit. Again, here there's politics. I mean, if President Trump wanted to hurt the Democrat, he would have, you know, maybe that's something about the earned income credit. Just want to, you know, that I don't want to say that President Trump took away the property taxes on purpose because this would have hurt the Democrat more if he took the earned income credit. So again, um, is there any politics going on? We really don't know. Um, federal estate taxes, single, used to be the exemption, 5490000 They increased the exemption to, uh, I'm sorry, for the single, they, they doubled it, and for the married filing jointly, they doubled the exemption. Who is this going to benefit? Obviously, it's going to benefit the rich. It means now you don't have to pay taxes on your federal estate until it's more than $22 million. used to be. 11 million so the exempt amount much higher they doubled it obviously this benefits the rich because if you have more than 11 million then i would say you are rich okay uh by my standards at least net operating losses they used to be carry them two years back if you have any losses and 20 years forward now you can carry them only forward alternative minimum tax alternative minimum ta tax they would they in, did increase the limit they did increase the limit now this is a quick and dirty overview of how those changes if you want to learn about those changes and much 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 more in details well the uh, the answer is to go to my website which is or to my youtube and on my website i have the link to my youtube and you can view i have 
as of today, around 80 lectures. Now, obviously, once I'm done with my corporate income tax course, I will have a quick and dirty review about changes in corporate income tax. If you happen to visit my website, please consider donate, donating. The donation button is right next to it. Um, st study hard. Good luck and see you.